My name's Bob, and I thought I would uh, uh, give a little, little bit of scripture reading uh, and a little bit of singing, a little bit of praising the Lord. Um, this is the way home with bits and pieces uh, with uh, Kelly and Bob and Mitzi the Wonder Puppy, and she's right here. I don't know if you can see her right there, but she's here. So, I just like to like to say a little bit about the Lord, and He's very big in our lives. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping that uh, I can help to bring more people to the Lord. I've I've helped to, to lead some people to the Lord, and. Um, that's uh, basically uh, the reason Jesus came. Jesus came to redeem mankind uh, because of mankind's fallen state. Everybody has a propensity to sin and the problem is is that God, Father God is holy, Jesus is holy, the Holy Spirit is holy, and God wants to reconcile the relationship between all mankind, all of Adam and Eve's descendants, that's who we are. Sometimes it takes a little bit of faith to understand uh, that everybody in the world is a descendant of two people, but that's what the Word says. And so I guess things can happen where people don't look alike, people don't talk alike, and there's stories to go with that in the Bible. But i just like to say right now that um, when the Lord came into my life, it was just totally, uh, I had been praying for five months to, to know Jesus as Savior and Lord. And it didn't happen for five months and it's about driving me crazy and I, I was in a real bad situation. Um, I had to find God because I didn't understand what was going on in life. And He did, he did show up. I did get saved. Uh, I'd like to tell you just a little bit. Uh, about how I got saved. Well, first you have to seek God with all your heart. Because He likes to stay hid. I mean, He expects us to seek Him out. And so I did. I, I sought Him out. At first, first, you know, at, at first I didn't want to seek Him out because nobody wants to admit they're a sinner. That's what you have to do. If you want a relationship with God and you want to go to heaven and you want all the blessings that God wants to give us that are in His Word, you have to admit you're a sinner and you have to ask Jesus to wash your sins away by His blood, and He will. But you have to ask and you have to seek God. So I, I sought Him for five months and I was getting to the point where I, I was getting so discouraged because they said that, hey, you pray with all the ministers and you expect to get born again and it wasn't happening. But it, it finally did happen, and it was dramatic. So I, it was kind of dramatic. I know I have a call of God on my life to tell others that they need to be reconciled to God because the alternative is not good. Um, so uh, I'll just give you a little, little what happened was is, is I was watching a church service, and the church service... Uh, was a Pentecostal church service and there was people singing in tongues and stuff like that and, and singing with the knowledge of the words of the song too uh, and I was just gonna praise God even though I didn't know the Lord yet and I figured that you know Jesus was the Lord uh, but I just I couldn't get in touch with him but all of a sudden as I was singing and I was praising God watching the church service on TV because I, I wouldn't have gone to church at that point in my life. Um, but anyway, guess what happened? All of a sudden, tears are streaming down my face like a torrent, like a river of tears. And then I look up and the ceiling's gone and the roof is gone. At this point, I was, I was uh, back in my parents' house living in a bedroom and I was watching the TV at midnight. And so the sky is open. This is a vision, like an open vision that I had, that there's Jesus up in the sky. Huge, ghostly image of Jesus. Of, I guess, I, I can't describe him, you know, usually with the long hair and 
he, he was just huge in the sky. It was probably the Holy Spirit, because um, I guess God can do things like that. And but so the first thing he says to me, I mean, you're probably wondering, you know, like, what did he say? Yeah, he says, <laughs> what are you doing in your father's house? And uh, I was in my parents' house. And I said, I didn't know what else to do at this time. Because uh, I had been in, in some terrible circumstances and I didn't know what was going on with my life. And So anyway, I said, I didn't know what to do. And then he says, get to church. And I said, what church, Lord? Because I was, I was raised Catholic and I went to Catholic grade school and high school and they never told me I needed to get born again. And here I am. I guess I just got born again and I'm scared. Uh, what, 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 what am I supposed to do? What church do I go to? And the Lord said, well, the president of the network, watch it tomorrow, turn on your regular programs that you watch, and the president of the, of the pro network will come on and tell you if you live in the Phoenix area, what church to go to. And he did. He says, if you're looking for a good church in the Phoenix metropolitan area, go to Phoenix First Assembly Church of God. Not Church of God. Phoenix First Assembly of God Church. It's, it's Assembly of God Church. So I went uh, as soon as I could go because I didn't have a, a car at the time and stuff like that. But that's my basic testimony. I, it was pretty dramatic when I got saved. I knew I was saved. I, I, it, everything around me for the next 10 days had a shimmering quality. It was like glistening. Everything had uh, glitter that wasn't there, but it was, it was sparkling and everything. I mean, people, the house, the car, outside, the trees, dog, the cat, everything. And, and it was like a heaven on earth experience. And I tried to relate this to my folks and they say oh yeah 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 okay yeah yeah but see it's 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 a personal thing that happens to you and maybe others can't appreciate it if they don't know and my parents did not know the Lord at that time so to make a long story short I did uh, get to church uh, my grandmother uh, she she get got me a motorcycle and so I, I I rode a motorcycle to church and and that's where the Lord started moving in my life and uh, that's where I met my wife they had a big singles ministry and I got involved with ministry and it's my it's my goal now to uh, pursue ministry in the Assemblies of God uh, Assembly of God Church and right now I'm going to a school of ministry in New York State and I'm I'll be taking my third course and I've registered for the fourth one. And you, if you go through this for three years, uh, you, you get certified, licensed, and ordained eventually. And you have to be uh, interned a little bit so with the pastor. And he takes you through uh, hands-on doing what, what pastors do and stuff like that. And so I just want to help people come to the Lord. Later on, I, I did get my, my mother and my dad saved. Uh, the Lord saved them. I didn't save them. But I, I witnessed to them and told them about the Lord so much that they finally agreed to pray to receive Christ as Savior and their wa sins washed away. And they did. And, and, and many other people, because I, I got involved in church with outreach, uh, driving a bus and picking up kids to come to church and when the kids got saved the parents would hear about it then the parents come and they get saved and it helps the people in, in the city of Phoenix uh, to come to the Lord and I would go uh, witnessing out door to door and knocking on doors and asking people if they'd like to come to the Lord and, and that people came to the Lord a lot out there at Phoenix First Assembly Church and um, and somehow I, I met my wife and she lived in New York, New York, upstate New York, and so we moved back here. And uh, one of the things is uh, we got involved in a prayer meeting and uh, we invited uh, my wife's daughter, my stepdaughter now, to the prayer meeting back, way back. It must have been 25 years ago or more right now because I've been married 30 years. And the daughter was praying with us and all of a sudden God comes really big. The Holy Spirit comes really big 
in our apartment at that time in Scottsdale, Arizona. And all of a sudden gives our daughter fantastic, uh, what would you call it, anointing. Uh, and she prophesied that we would come to New York for ministry. And pretty soon we did leave Arizona and came to New York. So anyway, that was a, a short synopsis of what God wants to do in someone's life. And what he did for me, he'll do for you. And that's, that's the bottom line. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all would come to repentance. And if you repent and you ask for forgiveness for whatever sins, God is faithful to forgive. And Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and he will save you. He will save you from your sins and forgive you. And when he forgives you, he doesn't remember them. God the Father doesn't remember them. The Holy Spirit doesn't remember them anymore. It is a challenge to admit you're a sinner because I, I found that was a blockage for me for years because there were some people that witnessed to me in my life years before and I didn't want to go. I didn't want to admit I was a sinner. Uh, well, you can't wait because you never know what life will bring or how, how long someone's going to live because you don't want to die not having reconciled your relationship with the Lord. So, that, that's, that in a nutshell is, is the testimony that brought me to the Lord. And I found out later from dreams I had when I was a kid and, and things going on in my life that I have a call of God on my life. So that's why I'm pursuing the school of ministry. And I hope to be an Assemblies of God a church pastor or uh, possibly an evangelist. Because when I did take my PA system, you can see it in the background here, I took it to the local park and I was singing uh, gospel music and I was ready to lead someone to the Lord and sometimes it's hard to do that but I did it like three three uh, days three weeks uh, weekends in a row when they had this because I was able to um, uh, do this in one summer three times the second time I did it the Lord he, he, once, you, once you know the Lord, He gives you gifts, especially if you get filled with the Spirit. You get saved, you get born again, but you also get filled with the Spirit. And after uh, the Lord, uh, the Holy Spirit fills you with the Spirit, His Holy Spirit, um, He can give you gifts. And He did give me the, the gift of evangelism, so I have a, a gift to lead people, more people, to the Lord. And... Um, so that's where I'm, I'm, I'm headed for ministry as, as soon as I can. And I'd just like to, uh, I'd like to sing a little song, Amazing Grace. I, I, I don't have the words in front of me right now, and I'll do it without the, the music. But I did spend about three or four years in the choir, and I, I was in worship teams. And I always loved to praise the Lord, even when I was in... In, in Catholic grade school and high school, if I went to church back then in the Catholic church, I never could figure out why so many people didn't want to really sing out and praise God. And I didn't even know the Lord back then. But it's, it's, it's one of the calls of my life is to sing and praise the Lord. So, uh, besides preaching the gospel. So, um, I'm going to sing just a little bit of Amazing Grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. was lost but now I am found was blind but now I see amazing grace is what God gives you when he forgives all of your sin 
He created man. God created man in His image and His likeness for a relationship with Him. And He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And when He forgives you, He has that. He brings you into a relationship with Him, with the Holy Spirit, with Father God, and with all the body of Christ throughout the earth, the ones that are still living and the ones that have passed on, the ones that are up in heaven now. So it, it's an amazing thing that, that God, I, I think this is, the, this is absolutely the biggest thing on planet earth and that anyone can be involved in is doing everything that we can to see as many people saved as can be and be born again and fill with the Holy Spirit and walk in faith because God does require walking in faith you have to believe he exists and you, you have to believe the Word of God and faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God and it's amazing what the Word of God will do for everyone the it's it's supernatural everything in here here's a scripture on Romans chapter 12 and it goes I appeal to you therefore brethren brothers by the mercies of God to present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable acceptable to God which is your spiritual worship do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing you may discern what is the will of God what is good acceptable and perfect God's Word is totally true it's never been proven wrong it's alive it will do miracles in your life God will do miracles in your life because the Word is Jesus that's his other name he has many names he he's the Word of God Jesus is and this word when you read it it makes your mind soul and what is it your your, your mind will and emotions um, they all start being transformed your soul, your mind, will, and emotions is your soul. When you get saved, you, God gives you a brand new spirit. He takes the old one out and gives you a brand new spirit. And your spirit is holy, pure. But we have to, that's why God gave us this word. His word is what, when you read it and you meditate upon it, and it becomes part of your life, it transforms us. It transforms us so that our mind, will, and emotions start lining up like Jesus. We become like Jesus. We don't just uh, continue in the world like we were. Because once you get saved, you have to be in the Word, because this is the part of the training you have to do. Uh, because you've been so trained to be a sinner, now you, you have to be trained to be holy. And being in the Word is what helps you to be holy. Praise God. And Paul, Paul wrote, Paul the Apostle wrote Romans. And um, he used to persecute the, the, the Christians, the, the apostles, the 12 apostles and the disciples. Um, he was one of the Pharisees way back when Jesus was preaching the gospel that would be sent out by the, the Jewish uh, people at the time that were, uh, you know, the people that determined what was the law and what wasn't the law. And when Jesus started preaching the gospel and the apostles started following Jesus and more disciples followed Jesus, they sent out people like Paul to go persecute these Christians. And they weren't even called Christians until later on, years later in Antioch. But these were Jewish people that got born again and filled with the Holy Spirit. And the Jewish people that weren't born again and weren't filled with the Holy Spirit did not like this. They didn't like seeing people uh, 
be changed, such as being healed or being raised from the dead, they didn't like this because they couldn't understand it. And they couldn't understand if, if Jesus said he was the Messiah, how come he wasn't riding a white horse and, and come from heaven and going to save him from the Roman Empire and everything? They were expecting a different kind of Messiah than what Jesus came as he came this time. Uh, he's coming again, and he, he's going to come again as more like a lion and not a lamb. And uh, he is the Lion of Judah. Praise the Lord. So Paul, Paul was a persecutor of the body of Christ. When, when Jesus was preaching the gospel and people were getting saved and healed, he was sent out from the Sanhedrin, the rulers of the Jewish people, which maybe included the high priests and stuff like that, the, uh, the rabbis, the synagogues. Um, because at that time, um, they, didn't, uh, they didn't have any uh, real understanding of, of, of Jesus being the Messiah. They, they kind of missed the boat. And, um, but the Lord came and he, he uh, rose from the dead after going to the cross. And he said, tarry in Jerusalem until you, you be endued with power from on high. I'm going to send my Holy Spirit. I'll send you the Holy Spirit. The Comforter, the Counselor who will be with you forever. And we get the Holy Spirit when we receive Christ as Savior. And he's the one who gives us the infilling of himself, the Holy Spirit, and gives the gifts according to however he wants to give out gifts. And God is really good. God is, I, I heard one preacher on, on the internet that, uh, Robin Bullock, um, he, uh, he, he, did, he doesn't say God is good. He says God is absolutely good <laughs> absolutely God is absolutely good everything he does is good but the the one thing that God does demand is that we turn from sin that we don't get ourselves involved with anything that is uh, what would you call of the devil and there's plenty of that kind of stuff around because uh, there is a devil and he's out to try to get as many people to go with him to where he's going. And you don't want to go where he's going to go because the word already says where the devil's going to go. And, um, but Jesus is like sent out a lifeline. And we just got to grab hold of that lifeline. You get saved, you get filled with the Spirit, and you start walking that narrow path. Broad is the way to destruction, but narrow is the path that leads to life. It's easy. Well, the devil's made it real easy for someone to go to that broad path of destruction. And you have to persevere. You have to, once you've sought the Lord and found the Lord, got filled with the Spirit, start living for the Lord, reading the Word every day, learning to pray, learning to know what all the promises are in this Bible that are ours, that you won't know about unless you get in there and read it. Um, it takes about a year to read through the Bible uh, if someone is reading for an hour, hour and 15 minutes a day. When I first got saved and went to church, I got a Bible and I made sure that I was in the Word reading on a regular basis and I read through the Bible five times before I stop reading through it. And then after that, I just, I go wherever just to learn various things. But I've got a whole overview of the entire Bible because I did read through it five times early on after I got saved. So it is, it is quite a bit. It's 66 books, 39 in the Old Testament, 27 in the New Testament. And if you're not aware of what the Holy Spirit has inspired men to write in here that is the canon, the Word of God, that's never been proven wrong. If you don't know what's in there, 
you don't know what you're up against in this world and you don't know the promises that God has given us and the things that we should be praying and standing on. So it's one of those things that um, church and pastors are very necessary. They're the ones that, that help the general population, everybody, to have that relationship with the Lord and grow every, every chance you get, every week, every month. Because in the grand scheme of things, uh, the Bible says that man is appointed uh, 70 years of life, 80 if you're strong. Um, people do live beyond that. My dad lived to be 98. He was into health food. He was into exercise. And people can make it to a nearly 100. But there is that day when our bodies give out and doctors can't help us anymore. And then what? That's where the Bible and faith and your relationship with God will ultimately be the, the whole focus because that's just the way it is. Praise the Lord. I'd like to pray for you right now. Father, I pray for everyone out there who's watching this video of The Way Home with Kelly, Bob, and Mitzi the Wonder Puppy. Lord, I just pray for them and their family that they would come running to you, that they would ask you, Lord Jesus, into their hearts, that they would ask forgiveness of any sins that they have. In Jesus' name, I pray that you would bless them in this regard, and I pray that you would send people to, to validate what I've said, people who would witness to everyone about the the miraculous things and and the amazing grace that God can give us and it's for every one of us thank you Lord that that they would find you and make you Savior and not only Savior but Lord and that they would have the faith and the perseverance to keep asking you Lord into their lives until it happens because it took me five months and I, I there's things that happen in someone's life that that you don't understand and I still don't understand to this day maybe the Lord made me wait maybe because of how important it is I mean because I was really really appreciative when he did come thank you Lord bless them all Lord bless all their families when uh, there's a scripture in the Word that says, uh, when you come to the Lord, you and your household will be saved. That's a promise. So, God bless.